Okay, ladies and gentlemen, we got a lot to talk about today. We got a massive problem that might be brewing inside of Season of Discovery, how the players are reacting to the XP changes, huge log changes inside of Nomergon, the future, and so much more. My name is Scott from the Comeback Kids. This is your Season of Discovery news. Grab a cup of coffee, sit down. We got a lot to discuss today. By the way, if you're interested in leveling up efficiently and finding your runes quickly and painlessly as possible, Check out in the description below our Rested XP link. Not only by doing this, you support the channel, but you gain direct benefits as well. It's literally the best guide out there for World of Warcraft. I promise, won't be disappointed. Okay, now ever since the re-release of Classic expansions starting in 2019, the biggest question on everybody's mind is pretty much, how far are they going to take it? Uh, because let's be honest, ladies and gentlemen, unless you've been living under a rock, Blizzard Entertainment has been simply re-releasing the World of Warcraft franchise for all of us to play again. Because once again, the next expansion in line, Cataclysm, is now in the beta, available for testing to those who are selected. Now, there's been a lot of people out there that I've asked their opinion on this expansion, and if they're kind of excited for it. And to be honest, it seems like a lot of people aren't really that interested. Uh, personally, I am going to be playing it and testing it out, so let me know in the comment section below if that's something you'd be doing as well. I'm not gonna lie, though, spending $15 a month right now on World of Warcraft easily has to be the best bang for your buck in gaming right now i mean you have retail wow you have classic wow heading into cataclysm hardcore world of warcraft regular vanilla season of discovery i mean you could play all these variations of world of warcraft every single day for a year and still not get bored so for a price point it really is quite incredible and speaking of prices it looks like we're once again getting another expansion pack pass with the blazing epic upgrade edition which includes a level 80 character boost a ragnaros inspired theme mount a little raffian pet and some more things as well we saw that they did this for wrath of the lich king and burning crusade so it's definitely no surprise here but to be honest it is something that i'm not really in love with seeing and that's probably why i'm so happy with season of discovery at the moment in the direction this game is going right now as you can see from the roadmap the world of warcraft classic self-found hardcore mode was recently released so the next big thing in line is actually going to be the season of discovery level 50 phase where we get access to new runes and content and stuff like that and then right after that we will have the pre-patch event for cataclysm now shifting focus back to season of discovery don't get me wrong i love the layout of adding a level up raid a pvp event and new runes because it does work and it is fun to play but I'm really hoping in these next two phases to sort of end off Season of Discovery. They take some risks in terms of like additional content that's playable because unless you keep evolving, players will just find this cycle to be very repetitive, uncreative, and boring. But I have complete faith in developers on that end, so hopefully that's where the direction is heading. Now, something that is starting to get a little bit out of control is actually the amount of damage and healing we're putting out at such a low level inside of Season of Discovery. As you can see on screen here, Krix is fighting the last boss inside of Nomergon, when all of a sudden you can see him hit the boss with a 5,400 damage Chaos Bolt. Now, I don't know about you, ladies and gentlemen, but when I was playing Classic World of Warcraft on my Ret Paladin, I wasn't even close to hitting with a 5,400. I mean, you can see me swinging at Ragnaros right here, and I'm actually just hitting for hundreds. Uh, my point is that as we start heading into the later phases, reaching level 50 and 60, our damage is going to be actually so high that we could very easily be hitting Burning Crusade numbers in season of discovery the question is how are the developers going to handle this sort of situation because first of all everyone's already getting one-shotted inside of pvp so they're gonna have to implement some sort of flat damage reduction maybe in the future to sort of counteract this or they're gonna have to just increase our stamina by a bunch when you enter pvp combat similar to how they've done in the past with retail world of warcraft these are all things that are going to have to be addressed heading into phase three uh not only that all these raids that are already established inside of vanilla like molten core blackwing layer onyxia's layer all that all of their armor health and resistance values are going to have to just be skyrocketed uh, in terms of values, or else we'd just be killing bosses in a matter of a few seconds. You know, this version of Classic Plus that is Season of Discovery is going to be incredibly hard to judge and make bosses balanced uh, off of, simply because our damage numbers are just so incredibly volatile in between each phase. On average, players are dealing anywhere between three to 400 to 500 DPS right now, and I see it only getting way crazier in the future. So hopefully that's something that could be addressed and fixed upon as well additionally not too long ago blizzard actually implemented the changes to the rate at which we gain experience points and i gotta tell you it has felt so amazing to be able to log into my alternate characters and to quickly get some levels in at the end of the night man for about 45 minutes to an hour on my paladin i went inside bfd with a full rested experience points and i got over two levels in about 45 minutes of playing which felt really good in a seasonal style of world of warcraft i think this change definitely brings 
a lot more life to the world for players leveling up and it vastly changes the economy as well on items such as crafting materials for low level players because now everybody is making new alternate characters. I mean, who doesn't want to try out new characters and classes, especially with all the brand new runes and additions inside of Season of Discovery. So I think Blizzard really hit the nail on the head with giving players more content in terms of allowing us to level alternate characters with less friction, which always feels really great. So big W from Blizzard, in my opinion. Not only that, it seems they are making some changes to their Wrathy Basin reputation rewards because with Season of Discovery's flexibility, with your class spec and your gameplay style being very fluid, it doesn't feel really good when you're forced to grab rewards that don't even apply to your spec when you bust your butts to get all the reputation for it. Uh, there are a lot of classes out there that have a wide range of role types, so it never felt good when you're forced to get, I don't know, strength gear when you're a healer as your rewards. That just didn't seem right. So they actually went ahead and removed the class restrictions from the reputation three-piece rewards. So now every class can get all types of rewards to live up to that flexibility that Season of Discovery offers, which is nothing but great news for the future phases once we can obtain the three-piece set. Now, additionally, with all the recent class changes over the last about week and a half, we have to take some time to go over the log changes because... There have been a lot of them, and starting out, it seems like we have a brand new S-tier spec right up there with Fire Mage, and it's actually going to be the Enhancement Shaman. As Enhancement Shaman main myself, I've always wanted some more damage, but uh, I'm not going to lie, this is getting a little bit crazy at this point. Being second overall in DPS with probably the most utility in the game seems a little bit out of place, and things definitely need to be tuned up for this class, I would say, to be equal with some of the other specs out there. You know, I think they should reduce the amount of damage you deal while you're dual wielding, and maybe increase the amount of damage with your two-handed weapon, because right now it's very unbalanced. Additionally, with our A-tier spec, starting off with the Melee Hunter, still staying near the top in terms of DPS when it comes to classes overall, which proves that there is a really solid design here with Melee Hunter and how they're being played. Not only that, they bring some good utility with Aspect the Lion, so overall, Hunter's in a fantastic spot. Next up, we have Destruction Warlock, which is absolutely pumping right now with an amazing rotation that's engaging and fun. Incinerate, Chaos Bolt, Immolate, so much more, man. So this class is performing really well as well. Of course, we all know that Elemental Shaman has been performing great as well. Also, with massive mana regeneration with Shamanistic Rage and a nuclear rotation, man, with Lava Burst and Chain Lightning whenever you get clear casting. This class brings great utility, amazing damage. It's no wonder they're in the A-tier DPS and they're performing really, really excellent right now. And finally, on the A tier, we have DPS Warriors. I'd say the biggest problem with Warriors is that it's very hard to master this class, and it's incredibly gear-reliant. Now, the Warrior's in pretty decent spot when it's handled by the right player, but there are definitely areas in which the Warrior can improve, and things should improve heading into the later phases of Season of Discovery, but overall, being middle of the pack right now is nothing but a great thing if you're a Warrior, and you should be really happy about it. That means you're not going to get nerfed or touched, things are only going to scale better for you. I know it's a surprise, but I do think Warriors are just fine right now. And also, it seems that the class spec that has been probably complaining the most over the forums over the last couple of weeks, Balanced Druid, is starting to finally look good on the damage logs. All these buffs to rotational abilities and them finally getting some spell power is starting to catch up to them, and they are really putting out some fantastic numbers overall inside of Nomergon. Not only that, they bring fantastic utility with Rebirth and Innovate, so if you're a Balanced Druid right now, you're eating pretty damn good. And speaking of eating good, a massive surprise is actually the Retribution Paladin shooting up over six ranks in the DPS log since their last couple of buffs. It seems that they are finally doing some great single target DPS with Seal of the Martyr being buffed significantly, and their utility they bring combining with that through the roof is just pushing this class into a very high tier above the rest, man. Remember, ladies and gentlemen, it's not all about raw damage all the time. There are so many amazing plays you can make with a Paladin, a Shaman, or even Druid that really adds so much value to the class overall, and that's exactly why I think Enhancement Shaman does need to get nerfed a little bit because you can't have the most utility in the game and then sit at second overall on the damage meters. That just, in my opinion, doesn't make sense, and I'm an Enhancement Shaman main. Uh, nevertheless, though, we have Shadow Priest dropping significantly far from Grace here, with them pretty much just staying very stagnant as they acquire all their gear inside of Phase 2. Overall, I think the rotation is very fun, and they don't ever run out of mana, so I don't think it's a class design issue. I just simply think it has something to do with the scaling of damage over time effects in Classic WoW, and how they don't critically strike, which might be a potential rune option for them in the future phases. So hopefully, things look up for them, and maybe Affliction Warlock. Now, a class that is in desperate need of help here, I think has to be the Rogue. I mean, they lack by far some of the most utility in the entire game. If you combine that with below average DPS, 
You have a class that is in dire need of help from the developers at this point, man. Another class spec that is in need of some development has to be the Arcane Mage as well. I think the biggest issue is that this class is kind of sharing a lot of niche abilities with the healing spec that the mage brings. So maybe a lot of the people on the logs are forced to have regeneration rather than purely damage inside of a raid. And that could be affecting them. I'm not entirely sure because I think their rotation in mana pool is perfectly fine. And maybe it just has to do with their damage numbers that need tweaking. I'm not entirely sure about that one. And going now to the worst melee DPS of all is going to be the Feral Druid. It's another class that is in desperate need of some love because it definitely has seen its better days inside of Sod, uh, you know, inside of phase one, when it was near the top five pretty much the entire time. Uh, this class for sure has one of the highest ceilings out there in terms of skill and potential and playstyle. It just feels like its damage numbers are just simply low, especially since all their bleed damage is also being reduced inside of Nomergon. So that might have something to do with it also. Finally, you have the worst DPS spec in the entire game because I don't even really really count frost mage at this point and that's going to be the marksmanship hunter they did see some buffs last tuesday to a couple abilities but at this point it just didn't do anything to them overall in terms of single target damage because they are over 25 points behind class specs like the fire mage and enhancement shaman and it's kind of getting ugly at this point so hopefully they continue to make additions to this class to bring it in line with some of the other specs in the game. Moving on now to the healers, to nobody's surprise, the top raw healing per second is going to stay with the Druid. An AoE wild growth ability that heals a group of five people at once is definitely hard to beat. Uh, not only that, they have great sustain and utility with Innervate and Rebirth, and they just saw some buffs a few patches ago to pretty much all their healing spells, which will definitely shoot them over the top at this point. Uh, right behind them, to no one's surprise, again, uh, we have the Priest, which is still performing neck and neck with the Resto Druid in terms of healing. Overall, these two are always going to say neck and neck in my opinion. I don't see this ever changing inside a Season of Discovery unless some of these other classes get really strong runes. Uh, moving on to some of those other classes, though, the start of the real competition begins with the Paladin, where they're honestly kind of pulling away from the other two classes in terms of raw healing. I mean, Paladin's mana efficiency buffs, as well as some of the minor changes to the class, definitely helps them in terms of raw healing. And I'm being told that Paladins can even solo heal Nomergon completely on their own, which is something I'm dying to personally see since I play a Horde character. I also would love to see them implement some raw healing spells for Paladin in the future when it comes to their rune design, because right now they're pretty much just spamming their abilities they've been using inside a classic, which feels a bit boring right now. Uh, next up, we have the Mage Healer, which is doing insane numbers right now with mass regeneration and chronostatic preservation. Both of these healing abilities, while pumping out great damage, is a very, very good mix of like fun gameplay style for a caster in this version of WoW. Uh, I absolutely love the design, and I think this class is in a good spot overall. You know, putting up solid damage, solid healing. They could fit in any group at any time. I think this class is what Season of Discovery is all about. I absolutely love it. They're going to be just fine moving forward. Now, moving on now to the worst healer in the entire game, which did see some buffs recently, is actually the Restoration Shaman. Uh, they saw some buffs to Earth Shield recently, but it's just sadly not enough to push this class over the edge even a little bit. Their mana sustains fantastic. But they are just sitting there hard casting chain heal the entire time and it doesn't really heal for too much and that's pretty much just the sad truth of the situation uh they're in dire need of raw healing abilities similar to like riptide or something that could be used to affect players instantly because healing range is just not cutting it as of right now you just run out of it like almost instantly with all the movement mechanics inside of this phase i just think we need some creative changes as class spec overall and it desperately needs some love from the developers because it's been on the bottom of the healing meters for the last two phases now so hopefully that won't be the case next phase moving on now to the highly requested log breakdown for the tanks it's no surprise that enhancement shaman tanks are taking up the number one spot right now because not only does this class by far have the most damage out of all the tanks in the game, the rotation is very similar to their normal DPS rotation, which makes the learning curve very straightforward. If you end up taking too much damage, you simply take off dual wield, put on a shield, and your armor scales so high to the point where you barely take any damage. And you have infinite mana because you end up just using water shield as well. You have a 6 second taunt with consistent damage with storm strike and all your shocks. You have maelstrom weapon to off heal you. You are by far the strongest tank in the game. And I don't even think it's close. Uh, we're going to have to see how this develops in the later phases of Sod. This tank spec just has perfect design. And I definitely think it's going to stay that way. Uh, up next on the log, we do have your Demonology Warlocks, which this spec is performing very well right now. Uh, most of the time, you can end up specking deep into destruction and grab Lake of Fire to deal a bunch of damage. But of course, when you're looking for that safer setup, you go down the Demonology tree and just end up being, uh, you know, generally way more tanky due to having Soul Link. Overall, though, tanking a Warlock has been very solid so far inside of Sod. 
uh, with them dealing a monstrous amount of damage due to all their damage over time effects and instant searing pains and stuff like that. I think Demonology Warlocks are going to scale very well due to how much damage they can actually put out, but I do think in the end game there are going to be other classes that can you know, main tank better against those really hard hitting bosses. So I like to think of them as like really high DPS, like almost speed clearers more than anything. Similarly, our next class I feel is kind of the same way and it's going to be the tanking rogue. The tank rogue's damage is very consistent and similar to their DPS counterpart. And generally the rotation is a lot more interesting than you'd expect, you know, keeping up all your combo point finishers to boost your defense, as well as increasing your stamina with their new runes definitely help their case overall. But there are fights when you drop all your stacks and all your defensive capabilities, and it just feels really bad at the moment when you lose them all. You know, perfect example is the final boss in Nomergon. In between each phase, you lose everything you have, and then you start getting hit like a Mack truck the beginning of next phase. It just doesn't feel good. Uh, I do think Rogue is going to need a lot more natural damage mitigation with some runes in the future, which will probably just make them a really solid off-tank option uh, more than anything when it comes to bosses that, that only deal physical damage. Uh, next up, we have easily one of the safest tanks in the game. It is your Protection Paladin. Not only can this class deal really good damage, they have incredible runes that you know, give them a lot of damage mitigation to make the jobs on your healer so much easier. You have Sacred Shield, Blessing of Sanctuary. All these runes and talent choices are amazing options from their talent trees to make them take little to like no damage, maintaining some of the hardest hitting bosses in the game. This class can really, really take a hit and it makes them very valuable when it comes to the end game inside a Season of Discovery. And I think they will scale very well into the next phase and even level 60 if this keeps up. Heading near the bottom of the list, we do have the Feral Druid tank, which did see some buffs recently to their AoE threat generation with Swipe, which feels good. I'd say the biggest problem with them is simply their rune placement and design. It feels really clunky and bad for Guardian Druids right now. Uh, having to choose between Mangle and Lacerate is just crippling them significantly, and their damage is really suffering because of it. Their damage mitigation right now is quite solid, but... They simply just don't scale well uh, once you keep getting gear compared to the other classes like Shaman, Warlock, or even Protection Paladin. Hopefully they clean up the Guardian Druid and give this class some more abilities to work with because as of right now, the damage is just really, really low. Finally, to no one's surprise though, you got the Protection Warrior and it's at the bottom of the list in terms of tanking. Now, of course, ladies and gentlemen, we all know that at level 60, Fury dual wield tanking could end up being the best thing in the game. But as of right now, Protection Warriors are just not good. Their damage is so low, they can never hold threat. They're very immobile, they're clunky feeling, the rotation is just so boring. Now, if we're talking about actually making Protection Warrior a thing, you know, with the sword and shield, this class is going to need a lot of help in the nearby future. They have incredible defensives, don't get me wrong, but the biggest problem is holding threat on enemy targets, and the rotation is just boring as hell. So hopefully, some new additions come soon. Now listen, in Phase 2 especially, we as players have started to see a sort of very big problem where you will not get invited to a raid group if you are a certain class overall and mostly we're talking about the warriors and rogues out there and something that they did add in future iterations of wow to sort of counteract this from happening is that no matter what class spec you play you bring a benefit to your raid that kind of no one else brings uh for example right now shamans and druids bring you know, Wind Fury, so they're always going to be needed. Priest brings Fortitude for extra stamina, Homunculi, and like power infusion and stuff. And I feel like certain class specs or classes should just get something added to them to bring more diversity in a raiding environment rather than just stacking the same classes over and over again. You need to make it different rather than just being all about DPS. I mean, a perfect example is that Windwalker brings Mystic Touch, which is a debuff on a target that increases the physical damage they take by 5%. Another example is Demon Hunters. They bring Chaos Brand that increases the magic damage the target takes by 5% as well. I feel like adding some of these unique things to a class that desperately needs it like warrior or rogue could make them a lot more sought after in a raiding environment to always make it feel like nobody's left out so hopefully in the future we get some more creative additions to these classes so that could be the case finally i just wanted to quickly discuss the fact that there might be a deeper story inside of season of discovery that no one is really noticing here uh now we know that zalatath made an appearance inside of phase one to help us get our void touch crafted gear and now we know that she did make an appearance inside of phase two through the lengthy quest chain, which crosses our path with her once again. I mean, this character is known for offering pretty much like significant void related power to other characters, which the cost isn't really known or apparent at this point. I mean, even now we're gathering things such as a charged void core, which doesn't really work out for us when it comes to crafting our items, so we don't really have a use for it. Until luckily, out of nowhere, the shadowy figure or Zalatath appears, 
offering us a solution to our problem. Additionally, she did make it clear that she hopes that one day we see her again and that we can offer her help if the opportunity arises. Anyways, pretty much stating that we are in her debt because she charged our void core for us to get our epic crafting gear. Uh, the question is, is what is she going to need from us in the future as a player? Uh, because if there is one thing that we know about the void, it always comes at a cost and it's pretty much just like dark evil magic in a way. Whenever you mess with that sort of thing, there's always something that comes you know, with gaining that said powers. So the big question is, when is she finally going to come to us to collect her said debt? Uh, is it going to be in Season of Discovery? Is it going to be inside of Retail World of Warcraft in the future? I mean, no one really knows, but I would really love to see the developers, you know, continue to add to the story while additionally creating more content for us as players. Kind of in between raid days, uh, a good buddy of mine, Jay Tello, even mentioned the ideas of Zalatath corrupting random zones every single week. And then that would then have new quests and content add to those corrupted zones to potentially expand the story on this corruption and what it's doing to the world. Potentially, it could even add new things past level 60 that can maybe even lead to new zones or even continents being discovered based on the void and all that sort of corruption coming into place. I know there's a lot of opportunity with Zalatath because... They're kind of making her a focal point inside of Retail World of Warcraft. So it'd be very interesting to see if they took this character and kind of expanded upon it inside of Season of Discovery to bring us some more content and lore within the game mode, which I feel is nothing but a great thing. And just like that, ladies and gentlemen, it seems that we're at a community part section of the video where we take your opinions and comments from below in our comment section, shout them out, and discuss them. So if you have something to comment about Season of Discovery so far in Phase 2, let the developers and the players know about it in the comment section below. Starting off, we have Tazi stating, maybe give guaranteed waylaid supply caches to every party member the, f the first dungeon of the day they complete, so it would be a great way to incentivize players doing dungeons. And I do have to agree, I love the idea to like incentivize players to get out there in the world, to group up, to go run dungeons again, because as of right now, once you get the gear from your dungeons, you kind of never have to go back. Uh, and I don't really like that idea because I feel like dungeons are a great load of content out there that can be replayed if you add some, you know, more incentives to them and rewards rather than just gear. I also think that the waylaid supply cash idea is really cool. I just think they need to give us more ways of acquiring it rather than just like killing random mobs out in the open world. I mean, even if it was like a daily quest, like you said, or hell, even a weekly quest or something, it could always keep the reputation for players increasing while also giving the, you know, players some gold for filling out these waylaid supply caches, which in my opinion would help the economy out for those newer players out there or casual players. So overall, I think this is a very, very good idea for future phases. Next up, we have Sebria stating, loving the changes and looking forward to more. Give me more stuff to do in the middle of the phase, though. We have so many unused areas in Classic that can be ripe with quest and loot. I think it's important we take the time to invest in the open world and not just instance sections of it honestly i do think that this is something that the developers are working on but for these massive additions to be implemented in classic you know working on these entire zones and adding quest lines and rewards and all that i would see that probably coming in at the level 60 phase for all this to you know be embedded into the game i really don't think this is something they would like to have like a one and done experience uh similar to the newer content they're having now i would see this as something that is going to be involved with more end game content for players to enjoy for a longer period of time because of course, you know, it takes time and resources, development to create all this sort of thing with a very small team that they have. I'm sure they would want it to be worth it and in the end game rather than a one and done thing. Of course, a good example is like Ajara and Mount Hajal because those are both great areas that can get some additions or even, you know, get some more lore or story or content to complete in inside of it. Uh, at this point, no one really knows what they're going to be doing though with zones like this, but I'm almost positive this sort of thing is coming in the future of Season of Discovery. Okay, and finally, this one is a massive one. So be ready, ladies and gentlemen. We have a comment from Adiro of Empires stating, I would love to see some guild quest in World of Warcraft. Maybe a quest where you need a certain item that drops from the end boss of a raid that you could only start the quest chain once you get the raid on farm. But it always progresses for the entire guild. After that, you would then need a certain amount of attuned players to progress. And the way you get this attunement is by clearing all the dungeons available and summoning a special boss at the end that should be a bit more challenging even for people who are raid geared. Additionally, this boss could drop alternative items such as strong raid loot on a lockout. Maybe some quests where you fetch some things in the outdoor elite zones or require certain things to be crafted that are difficult to craft. 
Once a guild has everything, you can get an item with which you can summon an extra boss after the end boss in Nomergon. And my, oh my, ladies and gentlemen, is that a massive content suggestion coming from Adiro of Empires? I think the idea of guild-wide progression has always been something that is really, really cool. And it, you know, incentivizes players to play with their guildmates and be a lot more involved in a community. I mean, they did things like this in retail World of Warcraft where you get like gold incentives. And I always thought this was a really cool idea. So adding new bosses that can drop loot or just additional forms of content you can actually progress through with your guild individually. That's a really cool idea I would love to get behind. I mean, I'm sure the development time would be quite long for something like that, but I, I think it's definitely an idea developers should take into consideration and maybe even think about adding for longer and later down the line. Uh, don't forget, ladies and gentlemen, we are streaming live on YouTube and Twitch. We just got affiliated, so if you want to come on down, hang out, and just enjoy each other's company and talk all things World of Warcraft, we would absolutely love to have you there. Remember, ladies and gentlemen, leave a comment below for me to respond to it live. Here are these news videos. Have a little bit of discussion point talk about it man i would really love to see your opinions on some of these videos in the comment section below so if you want your voice to be heard let me know all about it if you enjoyed the video please be sure to like and subscribe to get absolutely flooded with season of discovery content i want to thank you all so much for watching this video it's an absolute pleasure to be making content for you all until the very end my name is sky from the comeback kids i will see you all in the next one peace